Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. We have been exploring Les Filles and Marie for the last, I don't know, half a year or so, and we're definitely moving right along and um, I'm enjoying getting to know these amazing, amazing women. Um, before we begin, let me show you ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. And also, we now have the super thanks that YouTube uh, has permitted me to do, um, which you can do right on your um, your dashboard of your YouTube um, channel. And um, we also have coffee and Patreon, which are all ways of supporting the channel um, to help it grow and um, and expand. So thank you so much to all my current viewers and supporters. Let's get started and get to know Les Filles à Marie. So Les Filles à Marie uh, existed really between 1634 and 1662. Um, and Basically, they were the precursor to Les Filles du Roi, my other series that I've been doing. If Les Filles du Roi were the founding mothers, Les Filles et Marie were the founding grandmothers. Inside their stories, you really have the history of Quebec and those true, true pioneers. So their stories are unique and different. Um, what makes the Filles et Marie special is that many of them came by themselves. They weren't with a group of 90 or 100, uh, you know, caravan. They were coming maybe one or two um, at a time. They were sponsored largely by different merchants or a group or a family uh, or a, a church. Um, so it was a very different kind of operation than they feed Jawa. They were not given any award the, uh, as the king's daughters were given at some point. Uh, they were rarely given much of anything at all. So these women were hardy and, and definitely, um, uh, there's no word to say, but just absolutely steadfast and able to withstand so much. And for that, we are extremely grateful. Let's get to know our Fia Marie for this episode. So Jeanne Soldé is our Fia Marie of this episode. She is a viewer request. I do not have her in any of my um, files. So it was really interesting and wonderful to get to know Jeanne. Let's get to find out more about her early life. So Jeanne would have been born about 1630 in the small commune of vinay sous melcorne in France. Her parents were Marthe Sodé and Julienne Potier. Um, it's found, her commune is found in the Pays de la Loire that is circled up on the uh, top uh, left, and um, we have in the Département of Sarthe, inside of the Pays de Loire, there's about 900 people that live there. The church that Jeanne would have been baptized dates from the 12th century, the Villa sous Melcorne Église, and it was remodeled again in the 15th century, and of course we have the aerial view of the village as it exists today. So Jeanne, would Jeanne would arrive in um, New France on the ship that was Le Grand Recru of 1653. So she arrived on a ship with lots of other people, very unusual, but um, this was a major, major attempt uh, to resuscitate uh, Ville-Marie, otherwise known as Montreal, um, and because it was dying. It was a dying uh, kind of fort and it needed people, it needed people. So how do they do it? And by the way, this is the plaque and here is Jeanne's name that is listed there as one of the uh, people who came to save Montreal. So we have um, La Sœur de Maisonneuve, Chaminie de Maisonneuve, Paul, uh, and Marguerite Bourgeois who kind of joined forces in Le Grand Recru, and this was the early Ville Marie, it was a fortress. They needed to um, populate it, they needed people um, to stay. There was a lot of uh, threats from the Iroquois and the other Indian tribes. This was a dangerous place. And that is why early Montreal history is really focused on surviving. Um, it wasn't like Quebec City, although Indian, Quebec City also had its own issues with native um, native peoples, but um, it was just a more challenging area. So for a long time, Montreal was not viewed as the Montreal that it is now. It was kind of a, you know, a fool's folly, if you will. 
So the groom that she would select and who would select her eventually, his name was Jacques Beauvais de saint jean and he was born in 1623 in Égypte, France. His parents were Gabriel Beauvais and Anne de Prébourg. Um, he is found in the Normandy uh, region and in the commune of Arne. And so I want to also show you the, um, it's a very small community, about 600 people. And it's part of the larger Perche community, which sent so many French immigrants to New France. In fact, um, Pierre Guédois, who was the first one to acquire land um, in Ville-Marie, uh, was actually born here. And we have a, um, a plaque in the church that lists, and look at Jacques. Jacques is right there, um, along with Pierre Guédois uh, and some of the other people. Uh, and the are, these are the people who have left for uh, New France, and that is the honor that they have in that church. So Jacques would emigrate to Canada possibly by 1652, uh, he would be an engagé, he would be someone who uh, would um, pay his way, so to speak, and would eventually have quite a bit of holding um, because of his early start. By January 7, 1654, Jacques and Jeanne would have found each other. Now remember, Jeanne arrived in November um, of 1653, so he was waiting. Um, and definitely he was ready to um, join forces with this very brave young lady. So let's talk a little bit about Montreal, where they would be located for uh, much of their lives. Uh, the wonderful city that would become Montreal started off as Ville Marie by the founder, Paul de Chomedy, Sœur de Maisonneuve, and was an, essentially a missionary center in May of 1642. The colony would th not thrive, as we described. It was on, on the verge of extinction uh, when the Le Grand Recru, of which Jeanne is part of, um, and from this small group would evolve the Notre Dame Congregation, which Sister Marguerite Bourgeois founded. And, um, and so Montreal fear, you know, fought a, a lot of um, different... Uh, battles. They fought the Indians, they fought the derision of the Quebecers and the Three Rivers, um, who kind of said, what are you doing? Uh, they had to deal with the fact that it was a hard island to get to, wasn't on land, it was an island. Um, but of course, um, the very thing that made them, made it hard, uh, ultimately ended up being their great savior. And of course, Montreal now is an international city. Uh, these are some pictures of um, the older Montreal. And then this one here on the on the right is really Le Vieux Montréal, is how it's called, the old Montreal. And it really does look like that. It is the cobblestones. And when you walk it, as I have, you feel that you are part of history. It really is magical. They would have nine children in all. Let's have a look. We had Raphael, who married Elisabeth Turpin and had six children, all of whom would make it. Balbe, who married François Brunet and had ten children, all of whom would make it. Marguerite married Jacques Tétu and had four children, all of whom made it. Jean would die at the age of ten. Jean de Jean-Baptiste would marry Jean Madeleine de Moine, no children that I can ascertain. Jacques would die at the age of seventeen. Charlotte would marry Pierre Alexandre Turpin, the brother of, of uh, Elisabeth, who had married her brother, uh, Raphael. Um, and they would have six children, five of whom would make it. Etienne married Jean Baptiste Potier and had 13 children, nine of whom would make it. Jeanne would marry Guillaume Boucher and have two children, not, neither of whom made it before her untimely death at 30. Jacques would pass away at the age of 68 in 1691. He and Jeanne were, would have been married 47 years. And by 1729, they would have 226 descendants. Jeanne herself would pass away after 1697. This would make her at least 67 years of age. I cannot recommend this book strongly enough. Uh, I'm still devouring it. The Women of Ville Marie, Pioneers of 17th Century Montreal, written by Susan McNally, who happens to be a colleague of mine, who is on Les Filles du Roi, um, member, uh, you know, society, 
and I work with on several projects. But this book is just amazing. So please have a look. I put the links for you to observe. This will really give you a flavor of what was going on. Tremendous. Here are some resources for you to have a look at. We have the Quebec Genealogical Society, Genealogie du Québec et d'Amérique Française. Um, we have Genealogie Québec, of course, and the French Canadian Society, Maple Stars and Stripes. I love Maple Stars and Stripes. Um, I'm going on a road trip uh, soon, and this will be, um, even though I've listened to every single one at least three times, I will be, you know, this is my comfort zone. So I'll be repeating this as well. Um, just please download that podcast. Um, and then, of course, Wikitree is a phenomenal resource. They have a Fia Marie um, subgroup as well, so you can have a look at that. And, of course, the four societies. There are other societies, but these are the main ones that I have been able to find. I have posted all of the um, addresses for you to have a look at all of this uh, resource for you to continue searching for your Fia Marie. It's episode number 23 of Les Fiers Mariés. Uh, it was wonderful to explore Montreal and to see these movers and shakers. Jeanne, to be part of Le, Le Grand Recru and to have her name on there. Um, and for Jacques to be part of that, you know, pioneer stock that came even before Le Grand Recru. These were amazing people. These were people who truly, truly made in uh, survival of Ville-Marie, Montreal. So if you are a descendant of these, this amazing couple uh, and walk the streets of Montreal, know that this is where your ancestors made their stand. So, um, and truly, you can take pride in um, being a descendant of such a courageous couple. So with that, we thank you and we, uh, we thank the you know, this amazing couple, we bless their memory, we are grateful for their contribution, and we are forever humbled by their sacrifices. Um, and with that being said, I also want to thank my patrons and supporters who have been with me all this time, and I finally found a way to adequately thank them by giving them a shout out on each video. I um, want to thank you all for your amazing support and kind words. All of that has made a difference in my life and in this channels. So thank you so much. And I will see you on episode number 24 of Les Filles Mariées. Until next time, au revoir.